Hey, and welcome back to another Revit video. This video is going to be a little different than what I normally do, but that's all right. In this video, I want to cover what I think is one of the coolest voids that you can create in Revit. It's completely versatile. It's instance-based. It's it's line-based, so it's it's very easy. You can get to get it to do just about anything that you want it to. And it applies primarily to walls is where I've used this most of the time, but you could probably use it in a number of different places like floors or whatever it might be. But I'll explain more of that as we get into it. But right now I've got just three walls shown here and we're actually going to get back to this later as well. But first what I'll do is create the void family itself. So we'll go to file, we'll go to new family and I'm going to scroll down to generic model line based on so I'll hit open so immediately we can see our our line there by the reference planes so now what we'll first do is I typically want to go to the left elevation so imagine you're looking straight on at that line and now I will draw a couple of reference planes I'm a huge proponent of naming reference planes just so you don't get lost, you know what they are, what they're doing, and why they're there. But for the sake of this video, I'm not going to name them. That said, I would name them if I were you. So we've got our reference planes there. Imagine We're going to imagine that our reference level here, anything below that is a wall, a floor, anything that we're cutting through. So now we'll draw our void. So we'll go to the create tab, go to void and void extrusion. And for the sake of this video, I'm just going to use a square or a cube void. But depending on what your void is, or what your cut needs to be, you could make this shape really anything that you want, because all this is going to be is ultimately a pro a profile for the line. And we're going to push and pull that line and put that line where we want to to get the cut. So this is just the profile of that. So I'll hit green check mark to finish the sketch and now I will align the edge of this void to these reference planes I just drew and I'll lock them in place. Right there and then the bottom as well. And then the top I'm going to use as the reference level but I'm not going to use the level itself. I'm going to tab and make sure I'm selecting that reference plane that applies to that level. There we go. So now we've got our void in place. Now I want to add some instance parameters. You could make them type parameters, but instance parameters to, so we can easily manipulate this cut after we have drawn it in the model. So now I'll just draw some dimensions. Again, I want to use these use the dimensions from the reference plane associated with the level and not necessarily the level itself. It will, you'll have less problems that way. So we've got our, our depth, we've got our length. And of course, what I want to do is I want to even this out and equal. So I have the, this dimension equal. And as I change this dimension here, I will see that and as I push and pull these, uh, you can see that they stay equal. And that's exactly what I want in this case, because it'll be a square. It'll be easier to work with. We know what we're getting. And as I pull this up and down, you can see that the void comes with it as well. So now let's give these parameters. First, I'm going to give this one a depth. So I'll go up, I'll select the dimension. I'll go up to create parameter and I will name it depth. And I'd like that to be an instance parameter in this case. You can make it a type if you'd like. We don't need to worry about anything else right now. We'll hit OK. And now we've got our depth at one foot one just right now. And now I want our length. I'll select the dimension there. I'll go back to create. And I will type in length for the name of the parameter. I'll make that an instance parameter again. And I'll hit OK. Of course, length is already defined because the length itself is the length of the line. So I'll do length 
void. So there's our length void right there. So if we go into our parameters up here, we can see that we have our two parameters in the dimensions, depth and void, length void there. I'll put that at, I'll put the depth at six inches and then I'll put the void length at one foot. Hit okay. And that's what we're gonna get by default as we take this into Revit. But we're not quite done, almost done. We've got everything that we need to do in elevation. So now let's go to the reference level. And we can see our void here, it's not quite spanning the full length of our line. So if we were to draw the line, it would be held off that, that dimension there. We don't necessarily want that. We want the void to cover one length of the line to the next. So now all I need to do is I will align the end of the reference plane that it's denoting the end of the line to the edge of the void. And I'll lock that in place. And there we go, we have our void built in. If we go to the 3D view, we've got our void built into the line. And so as we draw the line, we'll be drawing the void. So I wanna load this in and I'll save this, go ahead and save this now as void line, load it into the project, perfect. So now we can see, there it is. I'm actually going to go to the south elevation so we can see, we'll hide the levels, and so now all we can see is this wall. So now, I'll go to component, and I'll pick a plane, that's perfectly fine, I'll pick this, this front plane to work with there, and so as we see the void line there, we're prompted to place it on a face or a work plane, and so the great thing apart, uh, great thing about this void is that you can place it on different faces if you've got walls that are angled or weird sloping floors you could just place it on the face and it will follow the face exactly as you need it so right now we've got the face of this wall and I'll just start drawing and there we've got our very clean nice looking void but nothing's cut out yet and that's expected and you wouldn't want the family to automatically cut because it is not necessarily it would not necessarily take into account the way you might want to cut so by default we'll see all of these as voids the the orange outline is telling us that those are voids and not uh, an actual modeled element so after we have those drawn you can see that they are voids because of the orange outline and so what we have to do next is actually cut them out of the wall because they're not truly cut yet they're just shown as voids so we'll go to the cut the cut tool we'll choose the wall or element that we want to cut and then we'll choose the the voids themselves but unfortunately I'm not able to select those and I do know why and that's because we have not completely finished building the family so I'll select the family I will edit the family and I'll come up here to the family category and parameters button. And if you come down here and you scroll down, you can see under parameters, the option to cut with voids when loaded. We'll have to check that value to make sure that these voids can serve as a cutting object. We'll hit okay. I'll save it. I will load it into my project overwrite it. Now if I go to the cut tool, I select the element that I want to cut, and then I hover over and select those voids themselves, I can see that they're cut. I still have the options to select them, move them around, which is very helpful, and I still have that cut. Something else, we can tell that they are actually cut if we go into 3D. And we zoom in here and see, yes, in fact, they are cut. And it works just the same. I can move this around and continue to achieve that cut. I can actually begin to overlap them, and they work just like that. Perfect for precast walls. This is what I've used a lot of times for precast walls. If there's a specific design that you build into the precast wall, you have the option to perfectly manipulate these. 
Now let's begin to affect our instance parameters. If you look, if you select the element there, our void, looking over here under dimensions, you can see our depth and our length void. The parameters that we built into the family are here as instance parameters. So now maybe I want that length to be three feet. And you can see that cut grows to be three feet wide perfectly. And maybe I want this one, maybe I want to change the depth to three inches. I can work just like that all the same. You can see that the voids continue to work just like that. I'm going to undo those and I'm going to return to my elevation and I will pull this to the edge. I'll actually straighten this out so it'll look a little better and I'll pull this to the edge of the wall. Now what's happening here and I get this a lot is the wall or this void is not fully cutting the wall because in fact what I'm seeing here is the edge of the wall beside the wall that's attached to this front face wall. So it's not fully cutting both walls because there's actually two walls here joined through a butt join. There's two ways we can attack this. We can choose to go back to the cut tool, choose this wall, and then choose the void to cut that wall. And so we get that cut nice there. Or in this case, I might prefer to do this actually. You can go to the wall joins tool go to this wall join and change that to a miter and you can see how that the void works perfectly with that wall join miter and so what I can begin to do now is I can begin to take this line to another work plane or another wall in this case so I'll go back to component and I've got my line there I'll go to the left side of the view cube and I'll, I'll choose place on face, which is chosen by default. And then I'll just draw that, draw that line there. I can actually align these together. So I can choose that endpoint, and then I can choose that line, that reference line that's built into the family and get them to align beautifully. I can then extend the end of that line, that void to the edge of the wall and like it. I did before go cut cut that wall and what do I want to cut the wall with that void and there we have that nice perfect looking miter join with these voids built in you can still continue to affect these instance parameters to your heart's content you can do just about anything with those this family will only begin to break if you begin to stretch it too far, like if I if I take this so far to, as to the depth being, you know, three feet, even though that it's beyond the, the wall itself, it's not actually going to break. It will just cut all the way through the wall, which it might be something that you want. So again, these families are pretty versatile. There's a lot that you can do with these. I end up using these a lot because maybe you have uh, specific reveals that you need to run from one face to another face or a wall to a floor or something like that. If you want, to, you want things to look even, that's this is definitely one good, easy way to achieve that. This is also a little easier and allows you to be a little more customized with the way you build reveals into walls because there is the option to, to bake a reveal profile into a wall, but you're limited and you don't quite have the instance parameters that you have with this family itself. I end up using this so much because it's just so helpful and I can get just about any kind of design that I might need or might want. You can do just about anything with this. All kinds of different cuts and joins. It's very helpful. What I will do is if you don't want to bother building this family even though it is pretty simple to build if you don't want to bother building this family yourself and you're happy with the way I built it I will allow you I've got a link I'll put in the description to download this family from my website 
it's very simple you just click the link hit downloads and it'll be right there for you I sure hope you learned something today and enjoyed the different kind of tutorial I know this isn't like all the regular tools videos that I do but that's okay I I definitely want to branch out beyond doing just the tools I know we all need to know how to use the basic tools in Revit but it's always fun to break into families and do different types of things achieve different results through families or different parameters through something like this so if you did learn something if you would please like the video that really helps me out always leave your comments questions in the below and I, I will always answer them. If you have ideas for videos or something you'd like to see, please let me know there. And if you would subscribe, I'd really greatly appreciate it. I hope you all have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.